And I want to bring greetings from my family. My uh, my wife Petronella, she's so sweet. I have also four boys. My, my first born son is called Texas Receptors. My second born is KJ, is quite tall, taller than me. Uh, he's King James, anyway. <laughs> And then uh, I have my Jeremiah. Soft spoken. And then I have the smallest one by the name of George. They say the hello to you, everyone. Above all, I have many friends and I have so many people that surround my life. I want to thank God Almighty uh, to bring McLean, his, uh, his family, into my life. A missionary, Joseph Hedens. I would have not had this privilege to be able to come and uh, reach out to you. I would For this, I am really indebted to Jesus Christ. I am so thankful and so humbled. Above all, like Paul says in the book of Philippians chapter 3, that's the scripture we'll use today. Verse 10, you need to remember that Paul was a very bad person. Paul was a murderer. Paul never loved Christians. Paul was so much against what God was doing in the lives of individuals. He never loved anyone to be saved and go to heaven. His desire was to see many go to hell. But one day, when he was on the mission to arrest the Christians, he met with Jesus Christ. That day changed the life of Paul. He was not called Paul. Paul, he was he was called Saul. The name was changed from a killer, from a murderer, to a preaching machine. The preacher of Jesus Christ. I believe you and I in this country, Zambia, we need a Paul. Somebody that can stand for Jesus Christ. Somebody that cannot waver. Somebody that cannot go back. Somebody that cannot look back and see great things that are in the world. But looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Paul, when he met Christ, he says, I press my mark towards the high calling. 
he became like an authority he says if I look back somebody will overpass me I need to set my mark my focus my attention on Jesus Christ and for this in Philippians chapter 3 verse 10 he says that I may know him as I am running I want to know him and know the power of his resurrection the fellowship of his suffering being made confirmable unto his death shall we pray dear heavenly father we come before you even at this particular time of the day Lord I ask you to, uh, to, to, to forgive me of anything that I've done before this day Lord my spirit my, my work that has not been pleasing to you Lord I ask you to forgive me Lord may you cleanse my lips Lord my mind Lord my heart Lord may you fill it with your presence Lord may you cleanse my lips with this Lord may you speak through me O oh Lord remove any word of my thought Lord that may come in between your, your thoughts Lord let your word flow with power Lord may your purpose be accomplished Lord save that soul Lord in Jesus Christ we pray if you want to know Christ for me my greatest desire is to know God to have a, a, rela a relationship with him and to have fellowship with him it's one thing to have a relationship with him it is also another thing to have fellowship with him before you have fellowship with him you must have a relationship with him it's more of like in our country Zambia we have different political parties for you to belong to a political party number one you must know the possession of that political party what does the political party possess do they have a lot of money do they have a lot of things that we need so much that when I associate myself with that political party I'll be able to have something if that's right then I, when I understand the possession that political party has I begin to look for a position in that political party. I want to be somewhere up there. Probably the general secretary. Maybe the spokesperson. If I can just get to that position. All this possession in this party. Will be mine. I will take a share 
when you have that position then you be part of that political party and you be happy you have everything that you need on this earth but let me say this all these good things all these great things they are temporary they shall go away they will never last there is a time frame that they will come to an end so Paul is saying I want to know him I want to know his possession his possession he is the creator of everything we had an opportunity to see the mighty Victoria Falls he created it it is his possession the trees the cows that we have anything that we can see the vehicles anything you can think of belongs to him oh what a great possession our God has the, the silver the gold any mineral you can think of belongs to God every creation but you know what Paul says I want to know him when I know him then all these things shall be mine the first thing Paul wanted to understand the possession that he can find in Christ the possession number one when God changed his life when he met Jesus Christ he was no longer the soul that was known that time he is now a poor a poor you and I it's you were not born again that time you were not a child of God now that you are born again you've been given the power to be called a child of God because of Jesus Christ that's the possession that you get from him number two you are a saint oh what a great guy we say Colossians chapter 1 verse 2 it says you and me we are saints let me say let me say this with all my heart with all the confidence I have in God we say Zambia is a Christian nation I don't believe that. Why am I saying so? Many people do not have a relationship with God. They do not have fellowship with God. That is missing. It is not part of their life. They are professing Christians. Christ is not possessed in their heart. You and I, if you are born again, your possession in Christ, you are a saint in Christ. You are not only a saint in Christ, you have faith in Christ. My faith is in Jesus Christ. Colossians chapter 1, verse 4. Do you have faith in in Christ, you do well. Even the demons have faith in Christ. You must have a distinction. 
You faith must show it. Your belief in Christ must be visible. The lost nation needs to see your faith in God. They need to watch your faith in God. How big should be your faith? As little as the masters see. It begins to grow. Is to grow. Have faith in Jesus Christ. There is nothing we can do to save ourselves. Not even in a church. My boys, they are not Christians because I'm a preacher. My wife, she's not a Christian because I'm a preacher. If they are without Jesus Christ, they will die and go to hell. But I have a responsibility to show them the position which is in Christ. To lead them to Jesus Christ. When they accept him, place their faith in Jesus Christ, they become born again. Praise the Lord God Almighty. When they die, and when I die, we shall be found in the presence of God. That is going to be a huge blessing. We are not only saints in Christ. We do not only have faith in Christ. You know, we were the enemies of God. How, how did that start out? We're back in Genesis chapter 3. If we go back in chapter 1, verse 26, God made man in his own image and in his own likeness. That's how God desired to make man. But the enemy who is Satan was not pleased. Remember he was in the garden of God. And man was placed in the garden of Eden. He was up there in the spiritual garden. He, he knew what man would become. The possession that is found in God. He said okay I must find a way that that image and that likeness is tempered with. He came through the woman. He tempted her and she accepted and the man accepted. They both ate the fruit, the forbidden fruit and that image, that likeness was no longer with man. In Genesis chapter 5, when Adam started bearing children, the Bible says he bare a son in his own image and in his own likeness. That was a fallen image, fallen likeness. Then, then, because of sin that entered into the world and through one man and that death was passed upon all we became enemies of God because darkness reigned in our souls you got to remember again in Genesis chapter 1 when God started crea the creation and darkness was upon the deep covered every, every, everywhere the Bible says the spirit of God moved upon the deep 
God is he's a great God when we say the second thing God says let there be light to remove to differentiate darkness and light to differentiate sin and righteousness there is a great distinction but I want to, I want to let you know that Sin is the darkness that is le- that reigns inside us. If sin is inside us, we have no relationship with God. We have no fellowship with God. This is the reason man went and hid himself. He was afraid. However, God is so gracious. He came looking for man. Where are you? Where are you? I'm looking for you. Deep into sin. God found him. And he loved him so much. He killed an animal. Innocent animal. An animal which is a spotless animal without sin. Got the skin, the blood was shed. Got the skin, covered man, the symbol of God's righteousness. Our righteousness is like the fig leaves that Eve and Adam covered themselves. Even if I don't go to church, I'm a good person. Even if I don't go to church, I worship God. Even if I'm not born again, I'll go to ch- I'll go to heaven. Zambia is a Christian nation. That's man's righteousness. Isaiah says your righteousness, your proclamation, your prophecy as being Christians is as filthy rags. We can only find righteousness in God through Jesus Christ whom he has provided to you and me to be saved. Therefore, you and I we have found reconciliation through Jesus Christ our enmity has been cancelled through the blood of Jesus Christ it is only in him we can have access to our father Christ Jesus says no man can come to my father except through me because I am the way the truth and the life it's in Christ Jesus we have found reconciliation oh what a great God we save because of the blood of Jesus Christ we have been made perfect my brother McLean is not perfect our missionary Joseph is not perfect I am not perfect no one is perfect in this world hey there is no role model in this world who is perfect I know here in Zambia when we start playing football our role model is Kalu Kalusha Bwalia. Oh, Kalusha Bwalia. Is Kalusha Bwalia still praying for tomorrow? He's our role model then, right? If God can be our role model, he's for, forever the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's a perfect God. He changes not. Let him be our role model. 
Tulangine iguli ngwesu wa tuyande kwa mbuku. When he is our role model. Tisobo na waba imu ntu wa kuchika tulangine iguli ngwe. We are perfect in him. Kwebo, tulaba iba ntu ibali iga wa tumuli ngwe. Each time when we look to him. Tulangine iguli ngwe. We will, we are made better. Kwebo, tulaba agupangwa ibali iga wa tu. Made better each and every day. In Colossians chapter 2. A Colossians chapter 2. Paul says, the only way I have possession in Christ is to walk in Him. I want to say this. I will use different phrases. I will use the word after <coughs> and then before and with with and then in him if you want to walk in Christ have you ever walked before Christ because when you walk before Christ you are realizing that you are a sinner you want to Christ to save your soul. Oh, I am a sinner. I am a sinner. I need you, Jesus. When you come before him, you surrender your life. Accept the final sacrifice that God made in him. Then you start to walk after him. He leads you. Wherever he leads me. How will you follow? When he sees you are obedient. He, you stop walking uh, uh, after him. Then you walk with him. What happened with uh, with uh, uh, with Enoch? Enoch walked with God. Before the flood came, he was raptured. What about Noah? Noah walked with God. What happened? The flood came. God got him into the boat. When the flood came, that boat is Jesus Christ. He was walking with God. But now things have changed. You walked before God. You became, you humbled yourself. And then you walked before God. You were obedient. You walked with God. You had faith in God. Now God is saying, in the book of Colossians, chapter 2, verse 6, walk in Him. I'm no longer uh, walking with Him. I'm walking in Him. In Christ. Guess what? When the disaster comes, when the 66 before it comes, because I am in him he will take me above he will rapture me he will say come up either but I show you what is going to happen in this world that's the possession that we have in Christ oh, what, a, what a great Christ we say I am waiting for that rapture but one thing he wants is to walk in him are you walking in him are you walking in him we are perfect in him we are complete in him let me talk about the, po the position now we have in Christ number one because I was a sinner I am dead in Christ 
That's what he says in Colossians chapter 2 verse 20. We are dead in Christ. You may be walking. You may see yourself alive. Do all sorts of things. You are dead. Now, if you are dead, you need to be buried, right? We are buried in him. In verse 12 of chapter 2, we are buried in Christ as much as Christ was buried. He died on the cross for my sin. That day when I acknowledge him as my savior, I became dead to my sin. His blood washed my sins away. I was buried in Christ. And I was, when I was dead, buried in Christ. As much as God quickened him that day, he quickened me. He made me to be alive. In Christ Jesus. Let me say this. In Zambia, even a person that is not born again, a person that is not saved, it's a shame that we always say may your soul rest in eternal peace this hurts my heart that soul is in hell in hell how can we say rest in peace let me bring it this way you You've been told that a house, your house is on fire. And your very loved wife is inside that fire. Are you going to say my wife, it is well? Can you, may you, may you burn well? If they tell me right now that your wife is on fire in Lusaka, I'll ask missionary Joseph to waste the plane. I need to get back to my wife. Because, because I care. Brothers and sisters, we need to change this concept. Any person that is not born again is dead in Christ. Is buried. His soul, our soul, is in hell. But blessed be to God Almighty. That day, when you realized I'm a sinner, you died in Christ. You were buried in Christ. Oh, hallelujah. You are not getting this. You were buried in Christ. When you were buried in Christ, guess what? Your life will be quickened. You are bound to wake up. To, be, to get out of the grave. Because when Christ, before Christ rose, up. The, the dead bodies were quickened. They became alive. When they became alive, waiting for Jesus Christ to come out from the grave because he's our first fruit. When he came out of the grave, they came out of the grave too. They walked in the streets of Jerusalem because Christ preached in hell. He says, here is the blood that has been shed. Are you going to believe? Are you going to accept? Those that believe, their lives were quickened and they were raised together with Jesus Christ. 
you never see life eternal without Jesus Christ. That is the position that you and me should realize we have in, in Jesus Christ. Those are the perfect people we can call Christians. It's not a nation where we have different different religions. The Buddhists, they don't worship the God that I worship. The Muslims, they don't worship the God that I worship. I worship God the Father. Oh, His Son, Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit bearing witness to you and me. Bringing conviction into my heart. That I am a wretched sinner. That God loved so much. Gave his only begotten son. To die in my place. That I don't need to go through that day. He experienced the suffering. On my behalf. That that day. When I accept him. I will rise. And I will be hid. In, in Christ Jesus. Colossians chapter 3, verse 3. I would love us to read that scripture. I would love us to read that scripture. It says this. For ye are dead. And your life is hid with Christ in God. Oh, hallelujah. My life is hid in Christ. Hallelujah. I don't have to worry about this temporary life. I don't, I don't need to fear death. Because death is nothing. Christ came from the grave. And one day, death shall be conquered forever. Only in Christ Jesus. My life is hid in Christ. Hallelujah. Yo, if you are born again, truly washed in the blood of Jesus Christ, your life is hid in Christ Jesus. I want to tell you again, when Christ died, those dead bodies accepted Christ. They were quickened. And when Christ came from the dead, they also came from the dead. Hey, guess what? <laughs> if my life is hid in Christ, when he comes back, I shall appear with him. Oh, hallelujah. I get excited. When Christ shows up, I will show up. You will show up. You will show up. Oh, what a great God we say. Oh, hallelujah. 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 If you are truly born again, it's not the whole Zambia that shall appear when he comes for his own. It is only the blood washed Christians. Those that have been dead. Those that have been buried. Those whose life is hid in Christ Jesus are the ones that should be called Christians and they shall appear with Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Oh, what a great position we have in Christ Jesus. This is what my country Zambia is missing. When you say you are a Christian nation, do you really know what it says in this word? Do you really believe the scriptures? Do you really walk through the scriptures? Look with me in verse 4, Colossians chapter 3. When, when Christ 
who is our life shall appear then shall ye also just write your name somewhere there he said when he shall appear then shall ye also I write my name Douglas also shall appear I shall appear with him it says in glory where in glory let me say this define the word glory I'll use just two words position and possession. I'll use Jacob when he was coming from Laban. Laban says, You have stolen my possession, the wealthy that I have. What possession have we found in Christ? We've been redeemed. We've been redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. I am a saint of uh, in Christ Jesus. I've been reconciled back to, uh, to God in Christ Jesus. Oh, I am an ambassador of God through Christ Jesus. That's the possession that I have. Now, the position. I'll get Joseph in Egypt. He tells his brothers go and tell my father about the glory that I'm in charge of. It means I am the though he was second, I'll say he was the first. Jesus is number one when he appears, he shall appear with all the Christians. Which place? In glory. Hallelujah. 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 Now let me finish with this. If you know the possession that is in Christ. You know the position that you have in Christ. Are you part of Christ? Are you part of Christ? What does it mean to be part of Christ? Let's go back to Colossians chapter 1. Verse 17. Verse 17. He says. I'm sorry, verse 7. Verse seven. seven. It says this. As ye also learned of um, a, uh, a our dear fellow servant, who is for you a faithful minister of Christ. Ati magani alu zalo olu magai ya guri epafra muzi muzigema Uyo shomega, u shomega, ugujita milimo ya Kristu, ukambo gandinwe. Alleluia. Alleluia. So, being part of Christ. Ati igubali wanguri Kristu. Means you are a minister. Jamba guti nyevo muri imuzige oro muntu uvelege la Kristu. I want you to go back to my introduction. The possession of the party. The position that you want into that party. And then you become the minister of defense. Iba good defense. Or the minister of local government. Or on this Iba minister, Iba good local government. Any ministry. Or on this ministry, you become the minister. No, my baba minister. You become like a high ranked, right? Much higher than the member of parliament. Much higher than the, the counselor. You are up top. You are a decision maker. Anything, anything that has to do with the development of this nation, you are there. 
Well, the greatest <coughs> gift that God has given us <coughs> since we have known the possession that God has that, that we have in Christ. And then also the position that we have in Christ. We must know the part that we have in Christ. You and I, we've been made ministers. Ministers of the gospel. Preachers of the word of God. Zambia can only be a Christian nation if you and me can go out and preach. Missionary headings. Uh, um, um, Mark, my brother, it's difficult for them to reach out to you and me. Number one, our cultural settings. Number two, language barrier. If you and me, we know our culture. We know how we live. We know how we eat. We understand the language. I am not Tonga. I'm Luvali. But this morning, I was translating from English to Tonga. Oh, because I know the culture. I know the languages. Take me to Lamba Land. I'll translate for them. Because I know the language. Take me up north with the Bemba. Oh, how to translate. I know the language. Take me to north, uh, Northwestern. Lunda. Kaonde. Uh, Luvale. Chokwe. I will translate. Because I know the language. I am learning Swahili. I want to understand the culture. Africans, it's time to reach Africa. These missionaries are a blessing to us. And in them being a blessing to us, they brought the true word of God. And this true word of God needs to be preached by every born again Zambian reaching out to every tribe do you want rapture to happen now preach to a soul tell somebody about Jesus Christ and then we'll rapture is going to happen. Do you know that we are contributing to the delay of rapture? The missionary has the responsibility to reach out everyone. It is the duty of the pastor to go out. We are delaying the coming of Jesus Christ. We are ministers of the word of God. And when we know that we are ministers of God, we should never forget the challenges that we are going to face. In, in the ministry, Mumulimo, I've been in the ministry for almost like 27 years. I was very young without beards. You know, gray is coming up because of the thin and thick places that I've gone through. The afflictions that I've gone through. Paul says this way in Colossians chapter 1 verse 22 in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy unblameable and reprovable in his faith 
If ye continue in faith, grounded, settled, be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which ye have heard and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven where I pour I'm made a minister. Brothers and sisters, being a preacher of the word of God is not a life of peanut butter and bread. It's it's a hard life. It's a hard life. I've been kicked out of the house many times from the landlords. You must find your way. We've stayed without food. But that never stopped me to preach Jesus Christ. My flesh has suffered many diseases. That has never stopped me to preach Jesus Christ. Are you willing to be a minister of Jesus Christ? In between the three, the possession, the position, and being part of. Where are you? Are you looking at the possession in Christ? Or you said, I have done with the possession. I am now looking for a position in Christ. It's not baptism. It's not tithing. It's not being a good person. It's dying to your sin in Christ Jesus. Being buried in Christ Jesus. Your life being hid in Christ. Your life being raised to together with Christ. If you miss that, you shall not appear with him in glory. You will come to church in vain. Your worship will be vain. It will be a traditional worship. On the lips, which is Zambia is a Christian nation. The, heart, the hearts of men and women are far away from God. I believe if Zambia is a Christian nation, corruption will not be the major or pronounced thing in this in this country. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Where are you? Shall we pray? Atupaile. Shall we pray? Atupaile. I want to ask you this question. It's between you and God. It's not between me and you. Remember God knows your heart. He knows your thoughts. The past thoughts. The present thoughts. The future thoughts. And your plans. He knows them. Be faithful to him. Are you truly born again? Have you been to Jesus? When was that day when he changed your life? When was that day you, have a, you had a position in Christ? When was that day you became part of Christ as a minister of the gospel?
If that has never happened to you, before I pray, I ask you to raise your hand and say, I want you to pray for me. I want you to pray for me. Shall we pray? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much, Lord, for this day. Thank you, Lord God Almighty, for your word. And I know, Lord God Almighty, you've spoken to me. And Lord, I want to say thank you. Lord, I want to say thank you for speaking through me. And Lord God Almighty, that your people, your children, have been so attentive. Lord, you know each one of us, our thoughts, our going out, our coming in, our laying down. Lord, every process of our daily life routine, you understand them even afar off. Therefore, Lord, help us to realize the possession that we have in Christ Jesus. Help us to understand the position that we have in Christ Jesus. Help us to understand that when the part of us which is found in Christ Jesus. Lord, may you bless every soul. Bless everyone here. Lord God Almighty, in Christ Jesus, our Lord and our Savior, we pray. Amen. Thank you.